Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. And today's video is an update, if you will, on Bristol Myers Squibb. I was asked by a subscriber to provide an update. I originally wrote about this company after they had announced their merger with Celgene back in 2019. And so I guess they asked me for an update. So I'm going to go ahead and provide that here for you. And let me start by looking at Bristol Myers here from the, from the perspective of fast graphs by the numbers. I'm going back to 2004, and I do want you to notice that company up through about 2019, the company was moderately cyclical and had really pretty flat growth. There wasn't a lot of growth. But then starting in 2015, the company's growth accelerated rather strongly. And as you can see here, let me cut one more year off. As you can see, the company's earnings growth has been about 18% a year. So I'm using a P ratio equal to the company's growth rate, drawing this valuation reference line. So when I put price on the graph, I do want you to see that the current blended PE ratio is 9.2. If I look at the normal PE over this time frame, and that includes these high values here with these low values here and these normal values here, I get a normal PE of about 19. But a fair value PE based on the company's historical growth rate would be 18 times earnings. Now, from that point, if I was just looking out to year end and the company grew as expected, that could be a significant annualized rate of return or growth of over 125% for this fiscal year only. But that's a little bit misleading, and I'll show you here in a moment, because the reality of it is if I look at forecasting, the company's forecast growth is to be 16% this year and then slow down dramatically. And I'll cover a few reasons for that. So if I'm looking at it from this perspective, I'm looking more at a PE of 15, which I think is a fair value PE. And over the next couple of years, I'd have almost a 47% annualized rate of return if we got PE ratio expansion from its current low blended PE of 9.2. And if it simply reverted to the mean and got back to its normal valuation. Now, looking at that historically, as I lengthen this graph out again, I do want to make a couple of points. This company has traded historically at a 15 PE and much higher at certain times. So that's not a complete stretch. And it did that when the company's growth rate was not quite as good as it is now. Now, when I originally published my YouTube article on the cell gene and Bristol-Myers merger, I do want you to see that the stock was trading at about $45.89 a share. So if I look at that, I ended up doing the article, it was actually a perfect time to buy it. Now, I'm not going to be able to hit it perfectly here, but there's about as close as I can get. There's $45.37. Since that first article was published, if I just simply calculate performance for you, up through yesterday's close, the stock is up 32.8%, and that's an annualized rate of return of just under 22%. So it's actually done quite well. However, I also want to point out that if we go back to the beginning of 2019, you know, the stock has really been flat to down slightly. It's been negative. So it hasn't been very popular here recently. Now, when I look at forecasting, the company just did report earnings, and they actually slightly beat expectations. I don't quite have that number in here yet, but bottom line is analysts have been increasing their estimate ever so slightly. If I go back six months ago, you know, to the $7.45, expecting $8.05, they came in just a little bit better than that. I don't have the actual number at my fingertips here, but that's not really what's important. What's important is the question would be, why has the stock been languishing, you know, for the last year? Why didn't it do very much in 2020? Of course, COVID had something to do with that, but it actually did so well since it came out of the, the Celgene merger. Now, I have an associate at the Dividend Kings who wrote an excellent article, just posted it today on the Dividend Kings. Now, this is for subscribers only, so I'm just going to highlight some of the key points here that my associate, Justin Law, prepared for us. And Justin is also very well known as the curator for the Dividend Challengers, Champions, and Contenders list. So he provides a really great service to people. He keeps track of all these best paying dividend stocks. And his question was, why the market remains hesitant on Bristol Myers? And he made some really excellent points here. Now, he pointed out that it's a low growth cyclical. And you see that pretty clearly when you look at what it's been historically. However, as I pointed out, that's not necessarily true over the last five or six years. 
But if I go forward over the next three to five years and look at it from the perspective of fast graph, it's expected to grow at about eight and a half percent. But that's not a given. I mean, there are some issues there, and Justin brings up those issues. First of all, he talks about how the company bragged in their most recent slide about their strong growth, but then he pointed out using the Fast Graphs Fun Graph feature that you know revenues and earnings both have not really been that great if you go back and look at the long term. It's not bad, 5% earnings and 7% on revenues, but what this previous slide that I just showed you was focusing on here, they were featuring you know, the patent expirations of some very powerful drugs that Bristol Myers had, Plavix being the most recent one. So there was a little bit of extenuation. They also talked about the company's total sales were actually up 7% in fiscal 2020. And Justin talked about that. And he showed some of their key drugs, Revlimid up 12%, Eliquis up 16%. And that's kind of their shining star right now. But Opdivo, which is an interesting story I'll get to in a moment, was actually down 3%. And then, of course, they had some other contributions from some other drugs here. But what's interesting is the company brags, and, and rightfully so, they should be proud of this, that Opdivo was the most successful oncology launch in history. It's obviously a cancer drug. It came out at $10.3 billion, where Keytruda, a Merck drug, only came out at $6 billion. But what they don't point out, and Justin updated, is that since these drugs came out, Keytruda has become really the flagship oncology drug for this area. And he quoted a blog by Brad Lonker who, for sharing this information, and I'll, I'll give the same shout out to Brad. So what's happening is there are some issues. Now, the pipeline for Bristol-Myers has been very interesting. They do have a strong pipeline, and there is some growth potential, but at the same time, the company's been making acquisitions, and you know that can be really messy. So the reality of it is, when we go back and look at this company, you know there are some issues with some patent expirations coming up. They've got some new drugs in the pipeline to kind of overcome that, but there are some concerns. There's some political concerns with the new administration and everybody ranting and raving about cutting drug costs. Bristol-Myers does most of their business in the U.S. market. So there are some concerns and issues with this possibly flatlined. But from a standpoint of pure investment merit, I continue to believe this is a significantly undervalued stock. I believe if you look at its growth potential going forward, assuming these analysts are correct, and right now on the long-term trend line growth, I only got three analysts. But if I go back here and look at the more near-term estimates, I do have a consensus of 17 analysts that are looking for a good year in 2021 and an above average year, or at least a good solid year in 2022. So just moving this stock back to a 15 PE, as I mentioned a few moments ago, would really give us a tremendous opportunity. Of course, in the meantime, you know, it's the low valuation, which is the leverage here. I call this natural leverage. I'm not gonna get a lot of growth. However, I do have a potential to see the PE ratio expand dramatically from nine up to 15. And, you know, that's at least a 50, 60 percent expansion of the P.E. ratio, which is where a lot of this rate of return comes from. The company does pay 3.25 percent current dividend yield. The earnings yield is a stellar 10.87 percent. The company is A plus rated, does have 50 percent long term debt to capital. But I do want to show you something else. The company has gone out and issued about two and a half billion dollars worth of stock last year. So I'm not necessarily crazy about that. I almost consider that a negative because prior to that, they have been reducing their share count during this undervaluation period. But because they're making acquisitions and starting to get pretty aggressive in that front, they did raise $2 billion in capital. My complaint is that they did it at a time when I feel like their stock is undervalued. But if they use that capital to good use and you know able to improve their margins, then that could be a real bonus. The company's been struggling with net margin here in the last couple of quarters, as you can see. But for the September quarter, they did have a nice pop up in, in net margin. And their gross margins have been growing again for three quarters in a row. We don't have yet posted the final quarter, which they just published, which I should be getting here in a day or two. But all in all, I think Bristol Myers is an extremely high quality company. It offers a very attractive dividend yield. If I look at it from a standpoint of dividend growth, it's only been growing their dividend at a rate of about 3% a year. But it's been a very consistent dividend payer, despite the fact that their earnings have been cyclical. The company has paid a real nice dividend. So bottom line is, I'm still very long Bristol Myers. I still believe it's a great long-term investment. 
mainly my, my biggest, you know, opportunity I see here is the fact that the stock is trading at such a low valuation. Despite, you know, potential political risk, despite some patent issues, the company is making acquisitions. They did do the Celgene acquisition. They've got a nice pipeline. I believe this is a great long-term play, and I think the downside risk in it is reasonably low just based on the fact that it's already so cheap. If I look at it from almost any other metric, I get the same picture. You know, the company's price to EBITDA, its normal price to EBITDA is low. Their EBITDA, because of the cell gene acquisition, did drop significantly in 2020, but it's expected to recover very strongly. They're forecasting good, solid EBITDA growth going forward. And then, of course, as a dividend-paying stock, I think it's also important to go ahead and look at the company's operating cash flows because that's where they, you know, they're going to pay their dividend and their operating cash flows have generally covered the dividends. More In more recent years, it's covering it extremely well. So if I look at the last five or six years, the company's dividend is being extremely well covered by operating cash flow. Free cash flow, which is also critically important, and that's what's left over after what you spent to run the business. Free cash flow in recent years is also exploding and growing very strongly. So I think their dividend is extremely well covered. It's not a great dividend growth story, but it's an extremely inexpensive stock. It's a very high quality company. And I do believe you could buy this stock at a valuation that really protects you going forward. So all in all, here's, that's my update on Bristol Myers. There are some reasons why the stock has been underperforming the market while a lot of other value stocks have begun to you know explode to the upside and perform. They're kind of still been left behind. As you can see, their price has been relatively flat for the last year. Actually, the last several years, if you go back all the way to 2017 and 18. But I started recommending the stock when it got very inexpensive back here in 2019. You know, as I pointed out, I wrote the first article on July of 2019. And it's been a good total performer since then with a solid dividend yield. And I do believe there's still more to run. So this is one that I think you might want to take a look at. It's an extremely high quality company. And it, as I always say, it's a market of stocks, not a stock market. There's a lot of value I see in Bristol Myers Squibb. So yeah, that's my update from my July 2019 article. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see here, don't forget to subscribe, give me a like, ring the bell, do all those nice things for me, and I'll keep doing nice things for you. Thanks a lot, everybody. I appreciate you.